Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie, and welcome back to Beginning C-Sharp with Unity video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be covering classes. In fact, this whole section, we're going to be covering classes, and there's a lot to cover. Okay, so what are classes? I'm sure if you've done any C-sharp tutorial, you will have been immediately dived into classes. You'll The first thing they typically do is they'll have you just immediately start typing out class and you're like, what does this mean? When I designed this course, I specifically wanted to keep that away from you because it's really important for you to understand the fundamentals, understand how things work before start getting into more advanced concepts. Well, at this point, you are ready to dive into it. Now, what is a class exactly? Well, a class is actually very much like a struct. It's a collection, a grouping of properties. It has methods and so forth. So in fact, what you can do to take to create a class is you can just take the struct you have already created and just simply change the keyword struct to class. And guess what? You have your class. Pretty crazy, huh? Well, I guess that's it for this video. No, no, I'm just just kidding. There's actually a whole lot more. In fact, as you dive into classes, you'll see they provide you a whole bunch of advantages. And you'll actually see working with structs is somewhat limited in the case of classes. The major difference between a class and a struct is that a class is what is known as a reference type. And a struct is known as a value type. And of course, to understand what it means to be a reference type and what it means to be a value type, we have to explore how C Sharp manages its memory. For the most part, we don't necessarily have to worry about memory in C Sharp. C Sharp is what is known as a managed language. For the most part, C Sharp takes care of it for us, but we still have to pay attention to the details. And if you don't pay attention to the details, your players are going to notice. For instance, if you hold on to memory far too long, you're essentially creating what is known as a memory leak, meaning your application now is accumulating memory that is slowly, that isn't being used and it's gonna slowly push out the memory that is being used. Conversely, if you release memory too early, you could potentially send your program into an unstable state or you can even cause your program to crash. Essentially, you need to let go of memory when you don't need it anymore. Now, as I mentioned, C Sharp takes care of this mostly for us, but there are some things we have to keep in mind. Okay, so we have a reference type and we have a value type. What does this really mean? Well, reference types live in a place of memory which is known as the heap. Where it are, whereas value types live in a place known as the stack. Okay, let's explore how these two places manage their memory. Now, for the most part, we've been using value types. For instance, when you've created ints, doubles, booleans, even structs, these are all examples of value types. Whereas strings are examples of reference types. And also when you create a class, you'll be creating a reference type. Let's start with the value types first. A value types, as I mentioned, live on a stack. And here's how it works. When you create, when you're calling, when you're calling a method, that method will create what is known as a stack frame. Now any variables that you create within that method will be placed within that stack frame. So if, say if I created a couple ints or I created an int and a bool, those would both be within that stack frame. Now within that stack frame, let's imagine we call another method. What will happen is then a new frame will be added on top of the previous one. Now we let's say we create a double within that frame. Now within that frame, it calls another method and another frame is put on top of that and so on. Now, at some point, we're going to stop calling methods and we're basically going to run through them. You're going to just simply get to the end of the method. And what happens when you get to the end of the method? You return from that method to the calling method. What happens is that the frames are popped off the stack. 
And all those variables that we had defined are now reclaimed memory. That's why we didn't have to worry about them. Eventually, it's going to be keep on popping these frames off the stack until we're at where we started from or if the program ends. So that's why we haven't needed to worry about memory management because C Sharp has taken care of it for us. Now we're going to get into reference types. And these are objects that live in the heap. And I've read one article that describes the heap as a heap of laundry. But basically, it's a place where we put our objects. And we put all our objects in this one central location and we have references to these objects. So a reference is simply a variable. We put a type name, the variable name, and then we can create an e we, we put a type name and then a variable name. And like creating a struct, we would use the equal new keyword and then we put the type after that. That essentially creates an object in the heap and makes a reference from that object to that variable we're referring to an object in the heap. Now I can create other references to that object. So if I create a variable that points to the previous variable, now I have two references to that one object on the heap. And here's the thing, references behave differently than value types do. And value types, when the frame is popped off the stack, those value types are collected in memory. But in the heap, if there are references to the object, then that object will stay around. Here's what happens. There's a non-deterministic process known as a garbage collector. And by non-deterministic means we can't determine when it's gonna run. It's C-sharp is gonna say, hey, run, run garbage collector, go clean the heap. Now we can ultimately give it a suggestion we can ask the garbage collector to run, but the garbage collector can be a fickle kind of guy. He's just kind of like, hey, I'll run on my own time. Now what happens is the garbage collector will go through the heap, and if it finds an object without any references to it, then, it's, then that object is no longer being used, and that object is simply collected. So here we have our object with two references to it. That object is not going to be garbage collected. Now this brings about an important question. How do we indicate whether we want an object to be garbage collected? Well, this is the idea of a null reference. Null meaning there is no connection. There's an empty connection between this reference and any object. Now, you may be tempted to think of null as zero, but null does not mean zero. It means nothing. It means limbo, emptiness. Now, you can create references that have null values. You put the type, you put the name of the variable, you put your equal signs, and then you could put null after that, and that's a null reference. Then you can create a new object and assign it to that reference. Now, when you want to delete an object or when you want to delete that reference to the object, you would then just put the variable name equals null, and that cuts the reference to that object. In our case, we've just cut one reference. Notice we have another reference to that object. So that object is going to stay around in memory. The garbage collector may run, but it will see that there's a reference to it. When we set that last reference equal to null, then that object is essentially orphaned in the heap. And when the garbage collector finds it, the garbage collector is going to get rid of it. Now, garbage collectors are critically important when creating your Unity games. You always have to keep the garbage collector in mind. In this series, we're not gonna be covering strategies, but here's what happens. The more objects you create, the more times the garbage collector is going to run. Essentially, if you create a whole lot of objects and you're nulling these objects out, the garbage collector is gonna run more and more times. The more times the garbage collector runs, the more power it's going to take. So if you're designing a mobile game and you have a game that has lots of garbage collecting collection going on, so what might happen is your game might run slower and you're going to be using more battery life. Now there are tactics for working with a garbage collector. For instance, there's something known as pooling. Let's imagine you have a game and you have aliens and you're shooting your aliens. Well, when the player destroys an alien, instead of 
destroying that object that represents the alien, you can essentially repackage it up again and then redisplay it to the player again at a different point in the screen. To the player, that's that's a whole new alien, but essentially you're just reusing that object. But again, these practices and concepts are way beyond what we're going to be covering in this series. It's just important for you to understand what the garbage collector does. Now, before we dive into the demo, let's just talk about the difference between copying a value type and copying a reference type. When you copy a value type, for instance, when you take a value type and you assign it to a, another variable, what happens is you're copying that value. That means those two values are independent of each other. Whereas when you copy a reference, those two values are still pointing to the same object. Meaning if you changed a property in the first variable, the second variable will reflect that change. Let's see this in action. Okay, here we have Unity open and I have my scripts folder selected. Now we have two different types of objects. We have a player and we have an alien and both of these are structs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up our player and I'm gonna create and I'm gonna turn this into a class. Here we have all these previous files open. I'm just gonna close these out just to keep things clean. And so we have our alien here and now we have our player. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete in fact, I'm gonna delete all these right here. And we're just gonna change this into a class. The reason I deleted those is constructors work a little bit different in classes, and there's a things you should keep in mind. Properties are identical. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, let's create a couple properties. Let's create a name property for the player and we'll create a score too. And the alien is still going to be a struct. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch over to my game manager here and I'm just gonna delete all of this. Now to demonstrate the differences between value types and reference types, first we're gonna create an alien value type. So we'll just call this new alien In here, we're gonna assign this alien, we'll say the hit points is 100. Now I'm gonna create another alien and we'll call this another alien. And this time I'm gonna copy this alien like this. And now what I'm going to do is change the hit points of this alien. We're gonna give this 150 hit points. Now let's print out the values. Okay, so we created an alien, we gave it 100 hit points, and then we created another alien, and we set this to 150 hit points, and we're using this, we're assigning it this alien here. Now, based on what I told you about reference type and value types, what do you think will happen? Think about that, and let's return back to Unity, and we're going to run this. Oh, we have some compilers. Now we'll run, we'll select our game manager and opening up the console here, let's put our console down over here. We're going to disable the game manager. And now you can see alien one has 100 hit points and alien two has 150 hit points. Even though we've assigned the same alien instance, what happened was we copied this alien into this alien and essentially they are different from each other. Now let's try the same thing, but with classes. Here we'll create a new player. We'll call this player one. And we're going to create a new one. Now we'll assign the player one a name and we'll assign them the name of Brian, like so. Now let's create a new uh, now let's create another player and we'll call this player 2 and we'll assign this player 1 like so. 
Now, if I change the name of player two, we'll call this Max. And now I'm going to print out both the players' names. Okay, now, based on what I told you about reference types, can you guess what's going to happen? I'm going to switch back over to Unity here. We're going to just shut this off. We're going to turn it back on again. I'm going to switch over to Console, and then I'm going to deselect the Game Manager script. Here we go. Oop, I didn't save. We'll try this again. Let's deselect this. I'll have the console open. And here you can see player one's name is Max and player two's name is Max. If we come back here, what happens is these are pointing to the same object. First, we change the name to Brian and then we change the name to Max. So what happens is this last name changed this to Max. So we essentially overwrote that first name. Now, right now I have this object. What I can do here is in player one, I can set this to null. Now, what will happen is now that there's one reference pointing to play, this player object, when I set player two to null, this object now is eligible for garbage collection. And what happens is that the next time the garbage collector will run, that object will be collected. Let's see an example here of player one to null. And if we change this, we'll run player two, see if it's still around. And we disable. Let's go back to our console and you can still see that object still exists. Okay, that's the end of this episode. In your assignment, what I'd like you to do is create a class for a boss. We'll call this a boss monster and just give it the name boss. Give this boss a name and also give it a point value. What I want you to do is create an instance of this boss class, assign it some values to those fields that you created, print out those fields, and then null out the class. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.